I always tell my students and postdocs, this is the best time to be in cancer research. We're rapidly moving these new discoveries into real treatments for patients. I was stage four de novo, or from the start. I had seven tumors in my right breast, and my cancer had spread to my bones in five places. I was shocked. Leukemia? What is leukemia? The platelet count was so low that she told me I had to go back to Houston, but she wouldn't let me get on a plane because I wouldn't survive the flight. Two months later, they go in for exploratory, and I was full of tumor. I had over 175 tumors. We followed the traditional protocol for treating ALL, and she relapsed. And this time, not only in her bone marrow, it was in her spinal fluid. We were ready to snap if you looked at us wrong. I mean, we were shaking, we were, we were scared. I think that was worse than the first diagnosis because you'd gone through hell and you know, you're thinking the end is in sight and now you know what you have to go back and do again for two more years. It was pretty tough. When you hear a diagnosis of cancer, you know, you kind of sit back and you wonder, you know, why me? I needed that sisterhood that I was missing and I wanted to join. I thought I could just pick up the phone and get a national organization for African-American women, but none existed. Times are different now, certainly, but at the time that I was diagnosed, people would think that I had received a death sentence. I spent my days crying. It's the thoughts that go through my head and the worry that I have for my children. And how long do I get with them? How many birthdays do I get to see? The federal investment in cancer research is critical to cancer care. Almost everyone has been touched by cancer whether it's a family member, a friend, or themselves. And so the best part of responding to that is investing in treatment, but we can do so much more. We've made great strides in the last five to 10 years. We're breaking barriers that we never thought possible before. Immunotherapy is one. We've seen over 30 FDA approvals in seven years for immunotherapy of different cancers, and we're just starting out. I was always convinced that I could beat this thing. They said I might be a candidate for this special immunotherapy, what we'll call now CAR T cell therapy. They were doing a trial and they wanted to collect Tori's T cells prior to starting the bone marrow transplant preparation. But if she didn't get into remission, which was a requirement for bone marrow transplant, this would be a backup. It was a study that was just starting. One of my team members was the lead physician in apalutamide. I joined the phase two. AG221 was the medication I took in my first clinical trial. The doctor decided that it was time to look at other options, and those other options were stem cell transplant. And so that was also a clinical trial, that was the second one. So my son was my donor, and it was called the Bellicum study. As I understand, I'm the first one to have that procedure done in the United States. I said, have you ever had Y90? I said, no. He's like, because you're like the best candidate for Lutathera, the PRRT program that we're going to be doing. Knowledge is power. We strive to change the mindset of our community. We know that clinical trials will give us the future treatments and change the face of breast cancer for African-American women. I was put on a PARP inhibitor. Two months after I started Lymparza, the breast cancer that spread to my liver is less active and has shrunk in size. Immediately after I got the T-cells, I went to Dave & Buster's, so I was already, my energy level was already like higher than it was before. Yeah, that's how good she felt. That's how good she, I mean, that was the difference between T-cells and chemotherapy. With Ludothera, I'm able to just play with my kids and be a mom. Very active playing tennis, and now I play golf. I just have not let my chronic disease affect my lifestyle. I feel good when I go to the doctor. My hemoglobin is up, all my blood counts are up, and I'm a living proof of the fact that a clinical trial saved my life. Patients are living years, not weeks and months anymore. And so we need ways in which we can have the best possible quality of life long term. So survivorship research is very important to making sure this happens.
Without basic science, we would not be where we are today with all of these wonderful developments that have led to real treatments for patients that are giving long-term durable responses. So we're at a point of time now that an infusion of money and, and funding is pretty critical to move this faster. We have a lot of very smart people taking those funds and figuring out all the genetics and all of those things that researchers do, developing treatment, developing protocols, all working for the same goal to eliminate cancer. We really don't, as a priority, understand how important the return on investment is. Our priority should be this. We can extend people's lives, their quality of life, and everybody who loves and works with them have a better life by making these investments. I have to know when my time is up that I have done everything I can to raise money. We need better treatments to keep us alive longer and give us a better quality of life.